Good morning, guys and girls, and welcome to another episode of the ME7 Breakfast Show with me, Matt. Well, what a week it's been. Uh, we've had two games this week. Uh, we've had a beating team uh, and if you've been living under a rock, we've lost our manager. Yes, uh, Brad and Shannon have decided to let Neil Harris go. Uh, obviously, we'll get on to that into the new section a little bit later on. Uh, obviously, we're going to do your comments and questions coming up later on, and we're also going to be doing your player of the week. All that coming up on the breakfast show this morning. So, yes, the big news of the week, the sacking of Neil Harris. Yes, Neil Harris has been relieved of his duties as the general manager this week on uh, Thursday. Keith Millen has taken over as interim uh, manager for the time being. Uh, for whatever reason, Brad and Shannon uh, and the rest of the management team have decided uh, that Neil Harris, obviously, it's time for him to move on. Um, look, I've got to say, uh, I really like Neil Harris. I think he was a lovely guy. I've been had the pleasure to meet him uh, quite a few times. One of the nicest guys in football. I know Brad and Shannon as well really do love the guy. Uh, he was probably the first uh, proper guy they, they met when they actually came over. Uh, obviously to the to the uh, UK from the US uh, and the first sort of proper football Brit um, and yeah they I know they they really love the guy and it's sad to see him go um, as to who the next manager is look obviously you can look at all the bookies odds uh, take that all I think with a pinch of salt I've seen a few names mentioned on there everything from Frank Lampard Steve Bruce um, but uh, look for me I've got to say my, my favourite at the moment is Scott Lindsay. I just really like what he's doing over at Crawley. But whoever it is, I don't care whether it's you know a seasoned uh, a, a seasoned manager that's been in the game uh, for years or or a new guy. I'm going to be fully 100% behind them and uh, you know back my jewels all the way because I love my team and I'm sure you guys too. And that's why you're watching this video. Uh, in other news, obviously, yes, yeah, so the two big games this week. So uh, Gillingham play crew uh, crew Alexandra. Sorry, on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, went down two goals to nil. That happened to be obviously Neil Harris's last game. Um, uh, again, lots of huff and huff going forward. We just could not find the back of the net, unfortunately. And then Saturday came Keith Millen's first game in charge of the duels. Uh, Gillingham playing MK Dons. Gillingham uh, winning 2 1, McCauley Bond scoring, uh, as well as Scott Malone in front of the Rain of Men, which, I mean, uh, for me, that was kind of the perfect send off for nil, I think. Um, and uh, uh, for those of you that stayed after the game, we did get Neil's uh, three punches, but this time it was done by Scott Malone, and I thought no other, no other better person to do it than, than Scott. So, uh, yeah, well done, Scott. It was his first goal for the club. McCauley Bond, uh, that's two and three games for him. He seems to be coming on strong, playing two up top, I think, really does seem to be helping him as well. So, let, let's keep that going. I, I'm really uh, really looking forward to, to sort of seeing who comes in and, and what they can do with this team. Uh, Joe Bode, he has signed for Mason United on a one-month loan. That's another big piece of news. Uh, obviously, game time is going to be key for him. He's a really good young up-and-coming player. Really like the look of what I've seen of him when he has played, but first team, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, actually playing is, is going to be really key for him. Uh, so for him to be able to get back out there, I, I think that's absolutely amazing. Um, let's have he has a great uh, loan spell at Manchester United. Look, it's a good level of football over there. A couple of goal, goals could do his confidence good, and then come back and hopefully you know take try and uh, take hold of the first team spot. Um, Really, guys, in, t in terms of news, obviously, that's really the, sort of the big stuff this week. We did have a B-team game as well against uh, Folkestone, uh, where the B-team lost 1-0, uh, mainly youth players and a couple of trialists, I believe, that were, were on there. But yes, obviously, the big one is obviously Neil Harris. Um, I'm not going to try and dwell on it too much. I really like the guy. I'm going to say it one more time. Uh, I know a lot of people out there didn't like him for whatever reason. Um, I understand his his philosophy, obviously, and, and the style of football wasn't necessarily the prettiest on the eye. But look, whether you liked him or whether you didn't like him, when you look at what you know he's done this month, uh, so when he what he's done so uh, with this team, and you know last year he could have walked away, um, and. I think up until uh, before Brandon Shannon took over, I think he had he walked away, nobody would have blamed him. He he really has sort of um, you know I think for me become a true Gillingham icon just by what he did. 
uh, by not walking away, by keeping this, you know, uh, sort of at least with a fighting chance uh, up until the, uh, the, the, the when Brandon Shannon came in and, and then obviously taking over with getting some top quality players in. I know the players are really going to miss him. Look, I'm going to miss him. But we are a football club. We're not just one manager. We move on. So, guys, look, I'm sure you'll back me in all saying thank you to Neil. Uh, thanks for the memories. Uh, but, yeah, let's get behind whoever comes in now and fully support them. Well, comments and questions time. So, I <clears throat> had a couple, obviously, coming from you guys this week. So, thank you so much. Please keep them coming in. Uh, right, first up, uh, Stuart Lewis. Not that one. <laughs> Uh, this is a great one. So, is there any truth to the rumour that the ME some podcasts have submitted their CVs for the vacant managerial position at Priestfield with Jules and Blood touted as director of football? Uh, yeah, you, look, okay, there's no harm. I heard it here first. Uh, so, really simply, James is going to take over as manager. Owen is going to be the uh, assistant manager, and I am going to be the kit man. Yeah, that's why right. I'm going to be the kit man, because that's all I'm good for, really. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, and uh, yes, Gills in the Blood is definitely going to be director of football because he's uh, top class at that. Uh, but uh, in all seriousness, no, of course, we haven't. Uh, we are not professionals. We'll leave that down to somebody who's actually a qualified manager. Right? Uh, but thank you, anyway, Stuart. Uh, Lee. Lee Clifton, uh, so FOM blog plus, so please check him out. Uh, oh, yes, yes, Stuart Lewis 66, that was the other one, so I apologise, Stuart. Uh, so, yes, Lee Clifton, FOM underscore blog, uh, with Michael Carrot, Stephen Schumacher, Kieran McKenna, all young coaches at Middlesbrough, Plymouth, and Ipswich, and the latter two got promoted into the championship. Do you think it's possible that Gilliam are looking to appoint a younger coach as Harrison's successor? The, the club has stated they want to go into a different direction, so clearly something different than Harris. Now, um, my first assumption was uh, kind of like you, Lee, thinking maybe going for something, somebody young, somebody like that sort of thing, Scott Lindsay type. But um, look, whatever the direction is the club want to go in, I'm going to be fully behind whoever comes in because I love my team. I'm sure you guys do. That's why you'll watch this, this video here. Um, but, you know, Gillingham are my team, whoever is in charge. Look, I said it on our pod last night, which, by the way, if you haven't watched, please go and check out our pod we did last night. It's two and a half hours long. It's one of the longest pods I've ever been on, but it was just unpacking the game and talking about managers. It, it was a great listen. There's some really good insight from uh, from uh, Luke, uh, from Owen, uh, from Alex from the 1883 podcast as well. We had Simon come on. Uh, and me kind of just blabbering in the background. Um, but yeah, please come on, uh, 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 I was going to have a listen. Uh, look, even, I hate, you know, I hate to say it, but even if Steve Emmons was to, for instance, has come in, um, I might not like the guy, but I'd be fully 100% behind him because I'm always going to be behind my team. So, look, Lee, yeah, do I think that that's what they're going to potentially be going for? Something younger? Yes, I think that is ideally where they will be going. Uh, Greg Gills, M-E-H Gills, so give him a follow guys on X or Twitter or whatever they're calling it nowadays, which is called E on, there you go, that makes life uh, a lot easier. Is it fair to make the assumption that the style of football we played was a huge contributory factor to the Harris being chopped? If so, then does that then remove coaches with a reputation of playing direct defensive football from consideration? Um, I, I do kind of believe that part of our attacking uh, or lack of attacking threat going forward was part of the reason why Harris essentially has been given a chop. Uh, obviously, the whoever the hierarchy has decided that um, whoever you bring in, they're probably going to want somebody with a little bit more to think there. So, yeah, you're right. Anyone with a kind of direct or defensive kind of stance, you could imagine sort of almost being overlooked. But the key thing here is it's getting the right man or lady for the job. I don't care who it is, you know, I'm going to be behind him 100%, but we're third in the table as we record this right now. You know, um, we've won, I think it's something like uh, 76% of our home, you know, uh, or 76% of our home games this season. So whoever has to come in is going to have to keep our home record intact. 
Um, I know we haven't scored lots of goals, so whoever is going to is going to come in is going to have to keep us. Uh, if they get a score in goal, we have some real talent in our squad, and I do genuinely believe that. You know, if, if you're a manager looking at doing a football club, you're going to go, wow, that's a project I feel that I really want to get my hands involved in. Um, but it's key that whoever comes in does hit the ground running, um, gets the respect of, of the players because I think it's a really tight-knit group there. Uh, you know, the guys that, that you could tell, especially if you've not seen it, but please watch the Connor Marston interview. Uh, he did on Tuesday night because you can tell that the players are really hurting them. They, they really do sort of miss uh, Neil, obviously. Uh, they find it a bit of a shock. But they, look, at the end of the day, these guys are professionals. Whatever happens, they're going to keep playing. Uh, you know, they're, they're not going to just give up uh, halfway through a game because their manager's gone. Um, but whoever comes in, I just feel, you know, really does need to come in and hit that ground running. And that whoever it is, I'm going to be 100% behind them because, guys, I love my jewels. I'm sure you do too. Uh, Thank you so much, obviously, for sending me in your questions. Please keep sending them in because I love answering them and coming up with weird and wacky theories, and I love talking about my jewels. All right, so, guys, thank you so much. Uh, our next, we're going to do your player of the week, guys, so uh, thanks very much. Well, guys, it's player of the week time as we come to an end on another episode of the MEC and Breakfast Show. So, three choices for you today. Um, three players who um, I think yesterday all played absolutely amazingly. And actually, on Tuesday night, uh, even though we lost 2 0 against Crew, I thought they played really well as well. So, your three uh, picks for player of the week this week we have Jake Turner. We have McCauley Bond, and we have the cheat code, Mr. Scott Malone. Guys, thank you so much for watching again. As always, look, it's 7.15 in the morning here. I'm filming this for you guys. I, I do it because, like you all, I love the jewels. And as I've said in the previous, uh, as I said previously, whoever the new manager comes in, they have to know we're going to be behind them 110%. Guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, up the deals.